So I've made a new blank layer over the top of the thing I want to blend. So in this case, over the top of my wolf layer. And I've labeled it clone stamp and I've marked it red. You mark it red by right clicking where the eyeball is and you can choose a color to designate it. Now I've chosen the clone stamp tool and I'm looking at the settings. I have it at 100% opacity. I have the brush large and 0% hardness. When I say large, it's at least the size of a pencil eraser if I'm erasing my work, right? And now the most important setting for clone stamp is all the way at the edge here. And it's what you want to affect. If you affect the current layer, it's not going to do anything because we have a blank layer. What I like to do is say current and below because that will take any layer that's underneath it and blend it in with the layer on top. So on clone stamp, what I want to do is I want to hold down option. And when I hold down option, it changes my cursor, as long as I don't have caps lock on, changes my cursor to a little bullseye. When I have the bullseye, then I just click somewhere. So for instance, I can click on this fur texture here. And then I let go of option. And now I have a brush. But that brush, whenever I start clicking with it, it's hovering and showing me a ghost image of where it's copying from, which is around here. And when I paint, when I click with the brush, it's going to extend from that area and paint out that texture. And because it's on a layer on top, it's copying. I am not destroying pixels as I go. Okay, so that's at 100%. So what does that look like on its own? It just looks like this. That's my clone stamp layer. Now, because I did it with soft edges, I can also take my opacity down and I can blend it more. So if I want to transition into the, what would you call it, into the tail a little bit more, I'm going to take a lower opacity and just hit it a few times. And it's okay if you overdo it because this is on a copy. So this is going to get, uh, this can be adjusted and erased from without hurting any of your other pixel content. So if I just want to blend that back in a little bit, I can. If I want to just soften, I'll go to a, a low opacity below 30. I want to soften these kind of dark patches with fur. I can do that with a lower opacity clone stamp. And this is a way of kind of refining and sealing in, in everything. Because I have it set to current and below, I can also seal from other layers that are showing underneath. Like I can take the fox tail layer and I can clone stamp that into the edge of my wool. And because I'm using kind of a, a lower opacity, it's already kind of blending those colors together. If I want a little bit more of that red on the belly of my wool, I just have to move my target, hold down option, click it. on its own layer so there it is because then all I have to do is use my eraser at a low opacity and I can limit the things that don't look so good and it will show the texture underneath because you can erase out your from your clone stamp layer it's on its own layer so if you overdo something you can always bring it back if I wanted a little bit of that dark texture back in that fur So, so much control. It's very helpful. If I want a little bit more of the orange to show up where I clone stamped, 
I just bite away from my clone stamp with my eraser at a low opacity, soft edged. And it does it for me. So that's how you can transition using clone stamp as well. So now I've got the back and the tail and the legs all where I want them. Time to move up to this layer. What do I start with? I'll do a quick save. Uh, I might start with adjustments. And those adjustments should always go in this order. First levels. Even if you think the levels look good, Digital art gives you this beautiful option of seeing it before you can see different options. So I shift that mid-tone slider to both sides and it's obvious I want it, to me it's obvious that if I need to change it at all, I need to change it a little bit brighter and maybe limit the highlights. But not, not too much. So it's a subtle difference in levels, but it's from that to that. So limiting the highlights helps. Next, I can go to color balance. And I'm going to put a little bit more cyan in the midtones, a little bit more blue, maybe even a touch of green. Remember, this is the temperature of the lighting. It has more to do with how the original photo was shot and the colors around it than it has to do with the, the local color of the the creature itself. And the highlights are going to bring back those reds and yellows a little bit. And in the shadows, I'm going to bring back the blues. Well, not too much. There's a lot of blue in there already. All right, so what did color balance do? It took it from this to this, which gives it a little bit more dimension. And if I don't like that, I can always undo it and try it again. Because maybe that's a little strong in the blues. So let me try it again. So just really subtle adjustments. This is not like levels. This does not deaden anything. You're just shifting the temperature of the, of the lighting. Now, if you want to deaden something or make something more intense, you go to your third direct adjustment, which is hue saturation. And in this case, I just might take the saturation down a little bit, and that's gonna help match the other reference. The other thing I can do is if I wanted to change the yellows or the blues, I can change from doing it to all the colors where it says master, and instead I could target something like the cyans. And first I like to bring the saturation all the way up so I see where those cyans are. And then I can just take the saturation of those down, or I can even shift their color. So shift them more towards a deeper blue rather than cyan. I can even shift them towards a green or something else purplish. There we go. All right, and then maybe the last thing is playing with our good old fashioned free transform options. So I might warp it now that I have kind of the belly placed. I can position this fur to overlap a little bit better so I can transition it. This is the rib cage and the chest and then the all important collarbone. So definitely get that kind of lined up where I want it for the dog or my creature. Maybe even lift it a little bit on the back here so you get a little bit more overlap over the shoulder blades. Okay, now it's all about these internal edges. And I have to decide, do I want to kind of erase away with a soft-edged eraser? So I've already gotten rid of the hard edges. Or do I want to use clone stamp to extend some of these? 
textures. This is where I might use my drawing tablet and my stylus so I can be pressure sensitive. It will kind of make these decisions faster for me, whether I'm using eraser or clone stamp. Right now I'm just using eraser, revealing what's underneath at a low opacity. And using those transitions I have, make it work. And because I'm using the low opacity, it's kind of naturally transitioning the colors as well. But if I really liked how, how bright and, and kind of uh, fully showcased that texture of that fur is, I might use clone stamp. So I'm going to make a new layer above it. I'm going to mark it as red by right clicking where the eyeball is. I'm going to label it clone stamp. And then using that tool, checking my settings, current and below, making it pretty big and soft edged at let's say 30% opacity. I'm going to target where I want to steal from. Let's say here and put some of that in. I can even try 100% because remember this is on its own layer so I can always erase away from it. But I really like kind of the bristles on the back. I can bring those into the back. But because I have a soft brush, you see how the edges of it are going to be a little softer than I want. I can do a hard edge brush, harder edge brush, which will preserve more of those edges. But that means I would have to then cut out the back myself, which would take a long time. But if I wanted these kind of striped effects, this is a good way to do it. And bring these colors throughout. And the beauty is because it's on its own layer, that's just what I did with Clone Stamp. I can always erase away from it gently and blend it in that way with my low opacity eraser. And decide how much of that extension I want to keep. And it's always helped by having a lot of overlap to use. Like overlapping fur into fur works pretty well. I can even go for a 100% eraser on my clone stamp layer with 100% opacity and take it right down to the edge of the original fur. And that will give me a little bit of rim lighting on it. Just make sure you have a soft edged er eraser. Otherwise it can look a little choppy. And the answer for that is to do it with kind of the echo effect of the large brush rather than try to do it too directly. There we go. Same thing here. I can erase away from that kind of bluishness. Or I can clone stamp with it. Remember your tools. 